Hey everybody, welcome to a new video. So this is the fourth episode of the code box in uh, Jitter series and we are going to see in this video how we can expand our blur filter also on the Y dimension so it will be a more uniform and more sort of classic blur effect. And in order to do that we are going to create another for loop so we're going to use nested for loops. Cool, so let's start. I got a weird visual bug here for which the, the toolbar of Max is sort of messed up. Yeah, fixed. Cool, okay. So let's start. This is the patches we left it last time. I'm going to delete the, the commented stuff uh, which we left from last time. We don't need it anymore. Good, so what's a nested for loop? It's basically just a for loop inside another for loop. So you have to imagine this is our matrix and before we were only iterating uh, um, on the x-axis so we were basically starting from pixel 0 so let's say this is the pixel where uh, Jitgen is currently working on the cell and then we were taking uh, sampling all the other pixels on the right of that pixel actually because we were only going in the positive direction summing them all together and then averaging them. Good. Now with another for loop what we are going to do so let's first see it in code and then we're going to see what we are doing on a more conceptual aspect. Good, so let's do like this. We just put another for loop inside our initial for loop. And we don't want to start by zero now. Let's say that we want to start by minus radius. So instead of starting from zero, we're actually starting from the left of this point and how much left depends on how big is our radius. So for j equal to minus radius as well, j is less than radius, we call it j because i and j are two uh, variables names that are often used for for loops, if we have only one for loop is usually we call it uh, the temporary variable we call it i, if we have a nested for loop we call it j and then we call it k and so on. So j plus equal to one, we don't need this semicolon here, Let's create our parentheses, our graph parentheses. So this is where actually now our sampling is going to take place. So now, instead of just sampling according to i, we are, going to, we are going to sample according to i for the x direction and j for the y direction. Good, so let's say that we have a radius of 1. And by the way, this radius should actually be, this radius should actually be an integer because we don't want to have a floating point i or j, we want to have an integer i or j, since we are sampling with sample peaks, which takes, which takes integer coordinates. So what we are doing is that we are starting from minus radius, so let's say that we have a radius of 1, it means we are starting here on minus 1, because we are starting by minus radius, so we are starting by minus 1 on the x, and then on our first iteration, so where i is equal to minus 1, uh, we execute the for loop inside the, the first for loop. So we are going to execute this for loop all the way through, so until j is equal to radius. So it's going to go like this. Uh, our i is equal to minus 1. Now our j is going to be equal to minus 1 as well in the first iteration. Then we're going to sample this uh, uh, cell here because j is going to be equal to 0, but i is still equal to minus 1 then uh, i is still equal to minus 1, so our x coordinate and j is going to be equal to 1. So we sample these three pixels and sum them all together, and then we pass to the next i iteration, because our j iteration is uh, complete, so we go back to our i for loop, and now the x coordinates is equal to 0, our y coordinates is equal to minus 1, here they are both equal to 0 and 0, so we sample this pixel, and here they are going to be equal to 0 and 1, so we sample that one. So basically it goes like this, the i represents the columns and the j represents the rows. So for every i column we sample all the j rows. So we basically sample 9 pixels, and put the result of those nine pixels inside the pixel that Jitgen is currently working on, which is this one on the center. And we average the color of those pixels into this one and this creates a blur effect. Good. So now if we give it a try, you can see that it's very bright and that's because we are just dividing by radius, which is equal to one, so we are basically not dividing it. We should instead divide probably by nine because we are summing together nine pixels. Let's give it a try. If I just add code the number 9. And I've made a mistake. I made a mistake because uh, i it's not going to be equal to 1 here because we said i is less than radius. So actually this should be minor or equal than radius because we want to arrive also to 1. 
So we want to start the tie is equal to minus one, then it goes to zero, then uh, it goes to one. And this, uh, uh, we don't have it if we say just minus the radius, because it's, if our radius is one and i is minus the radius, it means the die maximum arrives to zero. So this is, uh, we have to say minor or, minor or equal to radius in order for it to arrive to our radius value. That's what we want. So if, I, if we create a radius of one, that's uh, uh, what we get. If we divide by nine, then we get the correct result of um, uh, the final color, for example, alpha being equal to one, because we sum them all together and then we divide by nine, which is the, the number of pixels that we sampled. Good, uh, but instead of just calculating um, how much the radio, how much we should divide it for by making some clever math, I will do something dumb, which is just to create a counter, assign it to zero. Every time we iterate um, in a, to a pixel, I will sum one to that. So the counter in the end is going to be equal to the amount of pixel we sample, and then I'm going just to divide this by the counter. So now we will always have the normalized color as an output. Good, so you can see that if I go on and uh, make this number really big, my computer is going to go crazy because this algorithm is pretty intensive on the CPU. It would be much, much more performant to do the same algorithm on the GPU with GLPX, but uh, we're not there yet. I wanted to start with uh, JITGEN, so the algorithm is going to be pretty CPU intensive, but you can see that it works. So this was it. In this video, we saw how nested for loops work. In the next one, we are going to see how we can put this whole thing inside a function and why should we use functions and uh, yeah, how to use them inside the code box. So thank you very much for following. You can download the patch from my Patreon as always for free. And as you are there, maybe you can check around also my other patches, which are very cool. And you can support the channel in that way. So um, thank you very much for following, have fun and see you soon. Ciao.